tennis. It's all about slight and subtle advantages. Without recognizing the details of your game and knowing exactly where you can beat your opponent at, you'll never end up winning. There are two very fundamental aspects of your tennis game that will either help you keep winning or help you keep losing. The first fundamental idea of tennis is the serve, and the serve can be your most powerful weapon on the court, but the rate at which you hit the serve can greatly affect your game. The time it takes my opponent to react to the ball is based solely upon how fast the ball reaches my opponent. We can find that value using calculus. I hit the ball at a velocity of 98 miles per hour to my opponent on the other side of the net, who is standing 18 feet from the sideline and 60 feet away from me. So with that, we can form a right triangle to start our calculus problem. I stand 18 feet away from the side of the court. 60 feet away from the ideal spot to hit, and I blast a 98 mile per hour serve right down the tee, or the center line. So how fast is the ball approaching my opponent? To find this, we have to use calculus. We can solve for the rate at which the ball is approaching my opponent on the other side of the net. The faster the ball is approaching him, the less time he has to react. So we will find the rate at which the ball is positioned to him is changing every second. Since I am 18 feet away from the side of the court, x will equal 18. And since I am 60 feet away from my intended target, y will equal 60. And we have h left as the hypotenuse as we set up the triangle on the court. And to find h, we use simple Pythagorean theorem, which we find that h equals 62.642 feet. Next, we will use implicit differentiation of the Pythagorean formula to see the change of the ball's position relative to my opponent every second. We can insert dx dt as 0 because we know that my distance from the side of the court is constant and will not change during the serve. dy dt can be inserted as 143.7 feet per second, equivalent to a 98 mile per hour serve. And after we insert all of the given information, the only value we do not have is dhdt, the change in the ball's position every second. So we can solve for dhdt using basic algebra. And after I solve, it is known that if I hit a 98 mile per hour serve straight up the line 60 feet away from my opponent, the ball will approach him at a rate of 137.64 feet per second. So that means the ball comes 137.64 feet closer to my opponent every second after the serve. And that is calculus in tennis. Another fundamental idea of tennis is the lob. If your opponent is standing at the net, it's not always going to be easy to get past him. But that can happen. Unless you're a pro, you're going to have quite the hard time getting past him. And how do we solve that problem, you ask? By using calculus, of course. By using the lob, you can easily put your opponent on the defense in any point. You just have to know how high to hit the ball. Even if it's a tweener lob. If we set up three points, like a parabola, we can see a path the ball needs to take in order to successfully go over the top of my opponent's outstretched arm. The three points are, using the net as x, y equals zero, my position is at negative 33, 30 feet from the net with the ball three feet above the ground. The height of the ball I expect to be went over the net at 0, 07.5, seven and a half feet above the net, and the ball's ending position at 35, zero, 35 feet from the net. To find the curve between the points, we have to plug into the quadratic regression function our three points to find a suitable line. The line we come up with turns out to be negative point zero zero six zero eight five eight six one x squared minus zero one five seven zero nine one five eight x plus eight. We can then set the derivative of our equation equal to zero. The derivative is equal to negative zero zero six zero five eight six one x minus point zero one five seven zero nine one five eight. So we can then set that equation equal to zero to find any critical points on the curve. And when we set the equation equal to zero, we get an x value of negative 2.593. To know if the x value I came up with is a maximum or minimum, use the second derivative test to see if the second derivative is negative, which means the x would be a maximum, or see if the second derivative is positive, which means the x would be a minimum. Finding our second derivative of f double prime of x equals negative 0.006085861, 
shows us the value is negative, which means our critical value at x equals negative 2.593 is in fact a maximum value. Lastly, to find the y value, or the height the ball needs to reach, 2.592865 feet in front of the net to get over my opponent, you plug in the x value into the original quadratic equation to get a value of 8 feet exactly. So by using calculus, I have found that in order to lob my opponent and his outstretched arm at the net, I need to hit a perfect lob at exactly 8 feet high, about 2.5 feet in front of the net. So it turns out, calculus is very helpful in tennis. Knowing exactly how hard and where to hit the ball can be very advantageous to you on the court. Thanks for watching.